Hello my friends and welcome to episode 47. I have taken the liberty of removing all of my land units for this air only mission. Now, looking at the battle, um, these Hungarian units are garbage. And I don't see how they're going to get anything done. The 6th Army, which I believe historically died in this battle, uh, is not looking much better. At least their units are 2 star, and uh, the, the Russian units that I can see are one and a half. so <clears throat> at least there appears like there's some hope for them, even if what they've got doesn't look great. Right, <clears throat> with anti-aircraft guns lying around, and we can definitely see some aircraft. It is uh, patently obvious that we're going to need the strategic bombers. Now the question is, where do we deploy? Because all of our deployment zones are rubbish. These three zones are all we have, and they're all miles away from the front line. They're all disturbingly far away from the front line. There is an airport here, and there is an airport here, and there is an airport here. This one is a low-grade airport and is probably not that useful, but this one in the central location looks pretty good. <clears throat> so we're going to want an elite strike force of seven aircraft that's going to occupy the front line base. Which is mostly what we have here. So anyway, let's go through these. Okay, we have this new multi-roll, which has stupendously high air attack, but that's not what I want for bar. The old, uh, the old wolf is uh, stupendously expensive, but <coughs> ten slots just for that. But uh, it's going to be worth it. Speaking of which, the wolf is now in production. So, what we can do uh, is we can actually shuffle some fighters in. And in theory, Because they enjoy very, very high initiative. Um, we can use zero slots here. With 13 air defense, these are very hard to shoot down. Now, they're not going to have the ability to uh, shoot for free, which is kind of what you want on a... Uh, kind of what you want on a fire. So we'll just have to think about how we're using them very carefully. Because that's that's easily the most expensive plane that I have. Pretty certain that there is no other unit out there with that kind of slot cost. Later on in the war, there'll be strat bombers that have insanely high slot costs that are completely amazing, but they're they're a long way away. So these guys will just be relying on the fact that they have 
<clears throat> really high initiative for fighters and very good defense. Innately. We're just relying on the strength of the unit itself. Since they have no special abilities, we're going to give them standard camo. That leaves me with... How many spares? Nine spares. I think nine spares is probably plenty. Right, this this plane is now in production, so we're going to get 20 every, every mission. <clears throat> right, the last unit that I want... And this one will be a first striker, is of this new plane. Because it's only three slots, it's pretty... it's nice and cheap. And the initiative on it is absolutely terrible. That's its main weakness. Is that it has a absolutely diabolical initiative. That is easily fixed by my one first strike hero. Right, let's uh, pay attention to the Strat Bombers now. We have... Uh... We have two reduced slot heroes, so they're not going to save us... ...too much. So we've got two reduced slot heroes which we can use for these strat bombers. They're not like the most expensive unit on earth. Generally speaking, strat bombers are quite hard to shoot down. We can defend them. And uh, only high, the only th real true threat to a, to a strat bomber is a high caliber anti-aircraft gun. Which we shouldn't have to worry about too much. I don't know if we want to go to 6 here. It only makes sense to do so here because I'm using half slots. Which keeps that nice and cheap. These are obviously my two lethal strat bombers. <clears throat> I probably could have swapped these around but it doesn't really matter that much. None of them are actually maxed out just yet but they're close. Either way they'll get full experience. Okay, so now we have to talk about tacticals. <clears throat> so there are some new multi rolls available. We have this weird beast, which enjoys great stats for a multi roll uh, offensively, except that it has no defense. It is. It is incredibly vulnerable. It's got our old friend the Bowfire, which is nowhere near as good as the current multi roll crop. <clears throat> got the Hurricane in uh, the heavy caliber variant. The high caliber gun variant of the Hurricane, which is quite poor. And then, of course, we've got this new fresh off the production line multi roll, which is nowhere near as good, but is a slot cheaper. So, we're in a weird position. And then, of course, putting multi-roll to one side, we've also got uh, your usual buddy, the actual dive bombers.
do we want? How many dive bombers do we want? Hey, it's my arm it trains. <laughs> Never a less useful unit. Okay. I do, in fact, have two Type D dive bombers lying around. Do we... Uh, hmm... No retaliation doesn't really help them because they're, uh, unless they're directly attacking an anti-aircraft gun, which is usually a supremely bad idea, then that's not an issue. Ignore's entrenchment would be potent. Just allowing them to go after, uh, go after entrenched units. Rapid fire 1.5x. I guess that's the best we can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll take some offensive fighters. Some more offensive fires, maybe. Let's go ahead and change the camouflage. Okay, so the goal is to gain control of the air as soon as possible. Once control of the air has been acquired, you know, I can clear the map by myself, more or less, if I've got control of the air. Because lethal strat bombers eat anti aircraft guns for breakfast. And I have enough strat bombers to deal with any, any possible uh, threat. Okay, one thing I will do is I'll bring these down to 14 because it's a bit more efficient. So I can shuffle in a few more recon planes as well. Right. So I want my elite force in the middle, which would be this and this. I would say these two. The full fighter team. And my strat bombers. No, let's say let's say one strat bomber bar. And a recon plane. Okay, the other two areas can just be lightly defended. So one fighter, one scout plane. Let's put both the tacticals up here where there might be the enemy. Because I don't think they're going to get much love down here. They've only got 12 tiles reach. Ah, uh, well they might reach there.
Okay. In fact, I think the self-defending fighter would be a good swap for this one. And the reason why is because this is a small group, which means this fighter can be accessed. When you have a full cloud of units, you can you can make a wall in the sky with fighters behind it to defend. And then it's not a problem. But up here there's only three there's only three units. Okay. Everything is set as good as it can be. As for the scout planes, we'll just put any small thing that might help in some way. Aggressive counterattack might enable them to fight back a little bit if they get attacked. Aiming assistance can be useful on occasion. I don't think fearsome reputation works on an aircraft. Apparently artillery support works on aircraft, but you would have to drive directly underneath it and then attack a unit next to it. It's, it's difficult to use. Let's go with evasive. <clears throat> Try and keep this one alive. Okay. Right, that's it for deployment. It's time to bomb Stalingrad. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.